coming up on Hope Alive with Reverend S.C. Matebula. We've got children who are exposed to pornography. At the same time, they smoke daha. And now we don't have powers to discipline them. What type of a nation are we going to build? What type of citizens are we going to raise? This is S.C. Matebula, pastor of Hope Restoration Ministries. Ah, oh, we thank God for another day where we're going to feast together in the presence of the Lord. I pray as you sit back and enjoy this one, I want to promise you, your life will never be the same. Sit back and be changed forever. I want to talk to you under this topic, becoming a devoted citizen. Becoming a devoted citizen. Let me tell you something, Pastor Luang. I've been a Christian now for many years, over many years now. I have discovered that in the house of God, we've got many good Christians, but we lack good citizens. They are Christians, they worship God, but we don't have good citizens. When you look at that word, Citizen, it simply says a native or naturalized person, Bamba, who owes allegiance or loyalty to his country or a government. And this person is entitled to protection from it. When you look at that, this somebody owes loyalty, commitment, and a dedication to this country. You don't just benefit from this country, but you are also loyal. Now, both, you know, the native and the naturalized ones, you become loyal to your country. If you are a foreigner in a foreign country, you become loyal to that country. The next definition from the dictionary, it says uh, a citizen is a legally recognized bamba subject. And when you look at that word subject, it says, you know, under one's control. It is someone who is under one's control. A citizen does not control himself. You don't do things the way you like in a country. This is not your country. Umshaba wa South African, umshaba that God has given unto us as citizens. And you become a subject you know, into that country. Are you with me? Or a national of a country. Listen, it says, either native or naturalized with rights and responsibilities or obligations. You don't just become somebody who's just milking this country. You know your rights, but you don't know your responsibility. Every citizen in this nation must know their rights and you must not end up right there. You must also know your responsibilities. Especially in South Africa, people, they know their rights, but they don't know their responsibilities. Who loves the Lord, but they don't know their responsibilities right here on planet Earth. And the beautiful thing about us as Christians is that we have what I call a dual citizenship. You are a citizen of the kingdom, and at the same time, you are the citizen of the country. You are holding a double citizenship or a dual citizenship. That is why Jesus, in the book of John chapter 17, he says, Father, I pray for these ones. Don't remove them from the earth because they are not of this earth, and they, they will hate them. Because they are not from this earth. He says, protect them from this earth. He was saying, we are here on earth, but we are the citizen at the same time of heaven. But we need to know, how do we relate with other citizens right here on earth? Paul speaks to Timothy, Bazalwan. Please don't miss me, we are going somewhere. Paul speaks to Timothy. He says, Timothy, I want you, or, or Titus, I want you to teach these people. He speaks to Titus, not Timothy. 
He says, Titus, I want to speak to these people, these Christians who are citizens of heaven. I want you to teach them how to relate with other citizens here on earth. Because Christians can be Christians and fail to become good citizens. In verse 1 of Titus chapter 3, he says, number one, remind them to be what, Bazalwane? Come and read with me. To be what? You remember the definition of the word subject? Someone who's under someone's control. Remind them that they must not be here on earth at the same time they want to control themselves. They are still under somebody. He says, remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work. I want you to teach them to be citizens. Number two, verse two says, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to some people. Does it say to some people? Does it say to South Africans only? It says to who, Bazalwane? All people. Who are all people? Even foreigners. Even people of a different color. Even people who are not speaking your language. Even people who do not have your same belief system. You know what you need to do as a good citizen? You show humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. La Lela. But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, towards men appeared, it changed us completely. We became better people. We became better citizens because of Christ Jesus. So Titus, teach these people to become good citizens. That is what I want to talk about. Because we've got many Christians, but we don't have citizens in the body of Christ. I don't know the picture that comes to your mind now. When you read the Bible, you ask yourself, who are the people who became good citizens? Who demonstrated a good citizenship? Let me just suggest a few of those. You know the first one, there's a woman by the name of Dorcas in the book of Acts chapter 9. You remember? Hallelujah. You remember Dorcas, Bazalwan? Dorcas in the book of Acts chapter 9. This woman, she did good to the, to the, to the widows. She was a good citizen. She looked after other people, those who were lacking. Dorcas was a good citizen. The other person who was a good citizen in the scripture, it is a young man by the name of Joseph. In a foreign country, you know, he was betrayed. He was accused of something that he did not do. But when he became a citizen in Egypt, Bazalwana, you know what happened? He served the people in Egypt. He became a good citizen. And the Bible says he served faithfully. Even in the house of Pharaoh, of Potiphar, he served faithfully. Even when he became a prime minister, he served the people of Egypt, you know, the foreigners, and in an excellent way because he was a good citizen. We need to teach these things because there are people in the foreign country, instead of becoming good citizens, they are feeding our children with drugs. They are feeding our children with nyawupe. Instead of becoming a good citizen like Joseph, you know, who did good to the people who, who built their lives. I mean, the Egyptian had a better life because they had a good citizen. They had Joseph, you know, in their country. I am talking about becoming a good citizen. Both South African and those who are coming from other nations, if you have been given a space to serve in a foreign country, it is your role and your responsibility to become a good citizen and build the lives of people. Don't mess up with other citizens. Don't actually affect the lives of other citizens. Other citizens, they depend on you. But you look at this country. We don't have good citizens. No wonder the xenophobia. No wonder the violence. No wonder the language. Looking down on one another. 
still calling people by names, still calling people, you know, tribalism in the very same country when 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 on Muchangani, when on Mubedi, we're still talking that type of a language. You know, I rebuked this man the other day. He said, Hema Tebula Nibzel, Nibzel, he been a president, Yam Kosa, he been a president, Yam Zulu. Say, Zuno Rinamu president, Wamu when are you going to have the president of Eshangat? I said, come on. It is not about that. It's not about that. A president is a president of the nation. It doesn't matter if he's a vendor. It doesn't matter if he's a Zulu. It doesn't matter if he's a Corsa. He must also understand that even as a vendor boy, my interests are not only for the vendor people. Even if he's a Zulu boy, my interest is not of Zulu people. It's the interest of all the citizens of the country. It is my role and my responsibility to serve every citizen as a citizen number one. But it also begins with us citizens. We must stop seeing one another as vendors, shangans, Corsa, white people, Afrikaners. South Africans are not good citizens. That is why we must teach this. You know what is the plan of this sermon, Masalwa? The plan of this, we are going to package this into a booklet talking about the qualities of a good citizen, putting it in a small booklet, print millions and millions of copies. We want to put them in our schools. Just want to put them in our schools. Our children, they must learn how to become a good citizen while they are still young. We put these copies in a hospital. We put these copies in our companies, you know, in the trains. And then they must also be written in different languages, Zulu, Shangan, so that people can learn what is it, you know, how do you become a, a, a devoted, you know, citizen of the country? How do you build your nation? How do you become a blessing? Because South Africans, they don't know what is it to become a good, devoted citizen. The third person, picture that I have of a good citizen. You remember in the book of Luke, it talks about a good Samaritan. A good Samaritan. It's the discussion between Jesus and the lawyer. And then the question is, who is a good neighbor? Who is a good neighbor? The debate was based on that in Luke chapter 10. And Jesus begins to give a parable. He says there was a man who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. While he was traveling, this man, he was robbed and beaten, and he was left half dead. And it happened that a priest, which a, it represents, you know, the, the life of a church, a priest happened to be going down the same road. While he was going down the same road, he saw the wounded man. He looked at him. He passed by because he wanted to attend the church service. Good, you know, bad citizens, they think about their church service and they overlook the people who are wounded. He passed by and a Levite came as well. He looked. These are the elders of the church and the members of the church. They looked at the wounded man. They wanted to go and attend their services. Even when the man, the husband says, honey, I am hungry. Hey, honey, you know, they rush to church and they overlook the basic things. They overlook the basic things that must be done by citizens. They passed. And the Bible begins to introduce this man as a good Samaritan. It says this man as he was journeyed, as he journeyed on this road, it's like he was aware what was happening on this road because he had a first aid kid. This man was an empowered man. He was, he was riding on the donkey. You know, when he saw the man, the Bible says, he came closer. Read your Bible. He came closer to the man. And you know what he did? He started cleansing his wounds. He never asked him, you know, what, what, where were you going? Because good citizens, they don't ask those type of questions. You know, when people are, are, are hungry, when people are bleeding, you don't ask them, why are you balege in Zimbabwe? We ask when Zagalan is Zimbabwe. Now, you cannot ask him that type of a question. It is your time and your role to take some bread and give this person bread and give them water because you know what is happening. Now, we find a good citizen going down. Look, watch this. This man, he takes this man, he put him on his donkey and he takes him to the inn 
inn. He goes to the inn. He says, listen, would you please take care of this man? You know, here is some money. I'm still going away for some business. Whatever you spend on this man, it will be on my account. They are not even fearful to spend money on this man because they know that this guy is a good citizen. He can be trusted. His reputation is a good reputation. When he says, I will come back, we know he's going to come back and he's going to pay the bills because good citizens, they pay their bills. Good citizens, they make promises and they fulfill their promises. Good citizens, they are trusted in their community. Good citizens, they help other people. Good citizens, they cover other people. Good citizens, they empower other people. When Jesus was here on planet Earth, he paid taxes. He paid taxes. If you are a follower of Jesus, I want to speak to the prophets in this country, ministers. I want to speak to them who are busy stealing money from God's people and you don't even pay tax. You enrich yourself. Let me tell you, sir, that is evil because a good citizen, even if you call yourself a man of God, you must pay tax to your country. You must pay tax to the country where you serve. To get yourself a copy of this DVD package, call 011-976-0600 or email media at hrm.org.za. It's a well-known fact that 75% of the world's poorest countries are located in Africa. According to Gallup World, an average person lives on less than a dollar a day. With approximately 140 million orphans in the world, Africa's 52 million make up more than 30% of the entire orphan population. And this makes the situation unbearable to cope on a daily basis. Out of 100 disasters reported worldwide, only 20 occur in Africa. Africa suffers 60% of all disaster-related deaths. The People Matter Foundation focuses on disaster response and relief projects, which include food parcel distribution, supply of clothing, shoes, blankets for winter warmth provision, medical assistance, counseling, self-sustainability, and life skills to all people, no matter who or where they are. For People Matter Foundation to achieve this vision and mission, we depend solely on the generosity of partners and different donors for support. Please partner with us today and let's impact Africa for the better together. give you some few qualities of a good citizen. When they say to you you are a good citizen, there are some qualities. Number one, good qualities of a good citizen. A good citizen loves his country. Did you hear what I said, Pastor Juan? Citizens are always prepared to lay down their lives to protect their interest and honor their country. They love their country. You know, I've heard people saying, I love, I'm a South African for life. I love South Africa, but when you look at their acts and their actions, there's no sign that shows that they love their country. If you want to see that South Africans, they don't love their country, just visit, just visit Kempton Park. They are littering all over. Are you with me, child of God? Now, these are foreigners and even South Africans themselves. Don't tell me it's Nigerian. I'm talking about citizens. I don't see Nigerians there. I don't see, I don't see South Africa. I'm talking to the citizen. Whoever is a citizen, you cannot litter all over. Look at you wherever. When, when you are in your car, you just take a paper, you throw it anywhere. Look at our community. Look at our country. It is so dead. Look at the suburb. You know, especially, you know, I used to stay at Nokem Park, Bafari Street. Bafari Street used to be one of the beautiful streets. You know, the grass at Bafari, all the houses, they used to be cut. Everything was so beautiful. The last time I drove at Bafari Street in Nokem Park, you know, many black folks have moved into that area. The area of Nokem Park has lost some value because South Africans, we don't love our country. 
country. South Africans, we are not good citizens. No man in Atula, no amen, you are no. Because I'm not just concerned about you. I'm concerned about the next generation. You say you love South Africa, but you go all around, men. You urinate everywhere. Number one, come a young in town, and you are saying you are a good citizen. Ubaba in dem dala old man, right on the street, you just urinate, and you call that a good citizen, a devoted citizen. That is not a good citizenship, Barcelona. That is not a good citizenship. Let me tell you, a good citizen. When they see papers, they pick them up. I know that even white pastors cannot preach this. Because the moment they say this, we'll say, say they, they are racist. So let, 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 let us do it from black folks to black, black folk. Not even from black folk to black folk. From one citizen to another citizen. Come and tell the president and say, this message is from one citizen to another citizen. You love your country. There are some, there are some of the things that we are putting now in our membership class. We are saying because... There are people who are claiming they love this country, yet they don't love this country. I was preaching in Cape Town, and I was telling some of the white folks, I said, you guys, you must stop milking this country, and you continue to speak bad about it. Yet you are still milking it. You are, you, you are making profit, but you criticize everything about it. Yet you are making profit. Yet you benefit from it and your children. And you have benefited before, but you are still speaking bad about this nation. Instead of speaking positive, instead of building the nation, instead of contributing with your skill, you run away, you go to New Zealand, you go to Australia, but you keep on milking. You don't even invest back into the country. But Salwane, I don't have much time on this planet Earth. I must speak the truth like a dying man. And make sure that our children, they have a, bri a brighter future. So even right here at church, we have changed some of the principle. We are saying if you want to become a member of this church, number one, you must love South Africa. You must love this country. I'm coming on that one now. Don't, we say love South Africa. Number two, love the local church. Number three, love the pastor and his wife. Yeah, here is the point. How are you going to become blessed in a country that you are cursing? How are you going to become blessed in a church that you, that you don't even believe in? How are you going to receive from a man of God that you don't believe in him? Yabona shumeza mashangan. Hey, wena. Uma unga fruk shumeza shangan. Hamba yu tola ipe dike. Joba mu mpe dina lok shumayes. But as long as you are here and you are sitting under this leadership, you need to receive from us. And for you to receive from us, you need to make sure you believe in us and you love us. You love this church. You love the community. And you are under authority as a good citizen. Look at the person next to and say, hey, look we are cool, my man. Number two. Good citizen. You know what they do? A good citizen obeys the law. A good citizen obeys the law. A good citizen, mother figure, I told her a traffic light that says red. A good citizen, when they come across a red traffic light, you know what they do, Barcelona? They stop, not even over the line. There's a line, white line. You don't step over that line. You don't drive on a barrier line. You don't drive, you know, on a yellow line. Are you with me, Barcelona? I know we have accepted this thing. You know, th there's a way, what do you call it? P pedestrians. You know, when you come in, you allow people to, to pass. 
because you are a good citizen. You know why we have so many accidents in South Africa? It is because we don't have good citizens. People that don't, they don't honor the law. The place says you must drive 60. Here you are, you are driving 120 because you are not a good citizen. Yet you are full of Jesus in your heart, but you are not a good citizen. Look at the person next to you and say, it's your time to repent right now in Jesus' name. Well, I know you were enjoying this one. Unfortunately, our time does not allow us to go any further. But I know there are some numbers right now that are reflecting on the screen. Give us a call and would love to hear from you. May the good God do you good. May the good God transform you and make your life better. Until we see you next time, we love you and thank you for watching. Amen.